Okay. So, I think we're ready. Uh, I'm Saul. You may have seen me on the other side. Uh, but now I'm here. Uh, I'm going to tell you all about going mobile uh, in your Web WebRTC application with the help of React Native WebRTC. I'm here representing the Jitsi project, which is the case we're going to we're going to look how we migrated it. Uh, who here is familiar with Jitsi? Okay, a few hands. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to be quick a little bit on this. So Jitsi is a set of open source projects that allow you to uh, deploy video conferencing applications. They are fully featured uh, and run out of the box. So you don't need to, it's not a framework where you build on top. You have a finished product you can deploy. It's also a set of APIs and SDKs. So you can uh, use this on another web application or another mobile application. And we're going to look at that part uh, in detail. And it's also a pretty large community of people. Uh, we gather uh, at many conferences uh, and we get many contributions. We gather pretty much online. Uh, and for example, we have a few of those people here, like us. He sends patches every once in a while. Uh, good stuff. So that's who we are. And how does this Jitsi thing look like? Uh, pretty much like this. This is the typical uh, screenshot of a um, solo WebRTC developer. When you have nobody to test with, you test with Big Bug Bunny. Um, and also, I said we're in the browser. We're in all platforms. So of course, we're on mobile. Uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. We have a new version of the app coming, and one of the highlights is that white uh, sheet is black, so it looks a lot better on your OLED displays, amongst other cool stuff. Uh, we got lots of features, but today I'm not going to talk about the features themselves, but how you can take these features and run them on your mobile. So. As I said, what we wanted was to go mobile. Now, what did we have at hand? So our architecture is pretty much like this. So we have Jitsi Meet, which is our web application where you see the user interface that you saw before. That block is around 40,000 lines of code. UIs are simple, right? Then we got LibJitsi Meet, which is our um, low-level library. But this low-level library takes takes care of all the signaling, stream management, um, letting you know if a participant joined or left, um, statistics, audio levels, analytics, everything is integrated there. Uh, so the application doesn't use the WebRTC APIs because they are abstracted by our layer there, GT Meet. That is around 30,000 lines of code at the moment. And it uses, of course, the WebRTC APIs at that level. But then we also use other libraries like Strophe.js, for example, because the entire Jitsi Meet application is built on XMPP. Um, that is not very relevant to what we're talking here today, uh, but I thought I'd mention because it's also part of our DNA. Now, when we wanted to go native, you start with what everybody else is doing, I guess, which is let's build an Android app and an iOS app uh, native. Well. Some experiments were made, and with around 20,000 lines of code, we were like 10 features in, 10% of the features in, which is not great. That also means you need a lot more resources, because you need a team that un understands Android well. You need another team that understands iOS well. And then you have those 30,000 lines of code that are only in libgitsy means, so the library taking care of all the signaling and all the stream management, which you need to sort of re-implement. So what if? we could somehow reuse these things uh, and at least make use of all the uh, man hours that were spent there, all the knowledge that was poured onto that library, and all the problems that are already solved. At the same time, uh, Jitsi Meet is, is an application that was many, like it was built around, I think, 2014 or something. So, you know, it uses jQuery. Um, it's now still in a somewhere little dark corner. Uh, now it's a React application. But at this time, roughly at the same time, we were thinking, OK, we need to migrate to something which is better, uh, which allows us to architecture our application better and make it more future proof. We thought React was this answer. And roughly at the same time, React Native was coming up, which is like was the new hotness. It, it gave some promises that sounded great. So we started building a prototype for this application in 2016. 
for those who know React Native, this was React Native 0 0.27. So that was a while ago. Now, what is React Native WebRTC, or what does it give us? Sorry, React Native. Um, it is not a web view. So, of course, one way to go mobile is, ah, we'll use something like Cordova. <coughs> Uh, so we put our code on a web view, and it runs JavaScript, so we can do that. No, React Native, it uses JavaScript, but this is just to run some code that ends up translated into native via a bridge. So this bridge will turn your JavaScript code into native views. So you end up with a full, honest-to-God native application instead of something wrapped in a web view. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about why uh, you may want to go one direction or the other. This is what worked for us. It may work for you, uh, which is the point of what I'm, why I'm here. Uh, it's got a thriving ecosystem, so lots of plugins to connect anything to everything. Uh, and um, also, it's just JavaScript, right? So you can still write your, like the good thing about React and React Native together is the idea that you could write your logic in JavaScript and then on the web you would emit DOM so that it's rendered in the browser and on React Native you emit React Native components and thanks to the black magic of React Native they end up becoming native views and everything works. That was the promise. Uh, and it works for us. Now of course if you're not in a web view, you're not in a browser, um, you don't have WebRTC for example. So what do we do? Well, we build it then. Um, somebody started, uh, Henry started a plugin called React Native WebRTC, very original name, of course. Um, I released version 1.69 uh, last week with a number of good features. Now, so what does this, this module offer us? Uh, it offers us WebRTC APIs that you can access on your React Native application. They are usable. They are not the latest APIs that you can see on, you know, the WebRTC spec because things take some time to build and in the end it works today and you say I'll do it tomorrow and here we are. Uh, but it works, of course. It's just the API. The inner works are the same. Uh, it's battle tested, as in uh, we have been using it for years. Other people use it as well. Um, and it, it's usually pretty up-to-date. Right now, there's a little gap, you know, Christmas period, we got acquired, yada, yada. Um, so it's at Chrome M69 right now. It's also a funny number, but we're going to switch off it really soon, um, hopefully, to 72 or better. We try to keep up with uh, Chrome's releases very early. So those one point something million lines of code that you heard uh, Jeremy and Leonard's talk, we embed them all. That's what we use um, on the um, React Native WebRTC plugin. Um, part of the work that we did in the last two releases, so 167 and 169, has been in performance. Um, right now, we have an, on iOS, we have a metal-based renderer. Uh, we offloaded lots of work off the UI thread, so it would run a lot snappier, and we have seen significant improvements in our uh, own application in Jitsi Meet. So I think everybody would benefit from using the latest and the greatest because it is the greatest. Now, in the React Native ecosystem, not all the glitter is gold because if you want to build uh, an RTC application, there's lots of things you still need to do. Well, first of all, remember when I said it's just JavaScript, so ah, your web developers can chime in? Well, no. They can, but you are going to need to write native code. You will not be able to escape this. The cake was a lie. Uh, you'll have to do it. Um, but I, am, I wasn't a mobile developer before, but I somehow became one, I guess. So um, it can be done, and you don't need super deep expertise to start uh, working on it. Uh, you need to take care of audio routing. The WebRTC library will just use whatever is the default, but you may want to offer the user a choice. It's like use the, use the speaker, use the Bluetooth, use whatever. On iOS, it's pretty simple to do because there's MP volume view, which you can show, and then it's just already built in. The user chooses, dismisses, and that's it. On Android, it doesn't exist, and you have to build it. So that sucks. 
then of course the users have the expectation that your application integrates with a system calling services so that you don't get a, a phone call at the same time and things break. So that means that on iOS you will want to integrate CallKit and on Android this weird reasonably recent thing called connection service. Uh, there is a React Native CallKit plugin you could use but you need to wire this in. Then there is an interesting story about Codex because uh, on mobile, WebRTC doesn't use a software-based encoder for H.264. It uses only the hardware ones. <coughs> and in some craptacular Android devices, they just are disabled because they work so bad. <laughs> At the same time, uh, some Android devices are capable of doing hardware-assisted VP8 encoding, which means simulcast doesn't work even if you enable it because they use the hardware encoder. So there's a little bit of a mismatch, and you may need to, you know, test, fine tune, and use what you want. Think about what use case you want to cater for, what resolution you want to set, and what codec you want to use. So this is important for you to know. Um, timers don't work in the background uh, in the JavaScript library. There is a plugin that allows them to run in the background. It won't magically make your app run in the background, but if it's already allowed to run in the background, timers will run. So you may need to do that. And there's all sorts of platform shenanigans like OpenGL layer limits in Android, yada, yada. And all of that just to get something like this. So what we did, actually, we needed to both deliver an app, but also <coughs> deliver an SDK so that uh, other people want, uh, could do all of this without doing it themselves. And that is the GTMeet SDK. If we look at this application, this is really just a carcass because the G this just renders a GTMeet view, which inside renders the React Native root view. Um, so we take care of all those connections, audio routing, call kit, um, all the codec stuff. All of it is built in. And all you have to do is integrate a single view, and you get our entire experience, multiple participants, mute, unmute, all of it. Um, and this is very different from all the other APIs you get on mobile for these kinds of applications. They're always very low level. You need to do the entire UI and all that stuff. And we give it to you for free, Apache 2 licensed. Um, and there's already applications using it, like Riot IM from the Matrix guys, which is awesome. Here's a quick example of how that looks like. On iOS, you just get a hold of the view, call join on it, pass a URL, bobs your ankle. Then you get some delegate methods telling you, hey, the conference started, hey, the conference ended, and then you may want to like, dismiss your controller. But that's it. You get events to know what was going on. And on Android, and this shows a little bit something new in the SDK, we had the support for fragments. So you just take a fragment, get the view, and call join on it, and suddenly you have a view with a GT URL, then you dismiss it and move on with your, uh, whatever else your application was doing. So if we look back, how did we do? We started with this, which is what we wanted to do. So I'm happy to say that we are reusing 100% of our libgtmeet source code. And I guesstimate that we're actually sharing 85% of the UI code between web and mobile. And to give you a quick example of how this materializes, in the UI, this component down there with the controls and that component out there with the controls for the call, they are both the exact same thing called toolbox. We just have. At the end of it, the rendering is done on React Native views or in DOM for the web. Everything else, all the logic to keep the state and everything, all of that is shared. So in our humble opinion, React Native is ready if you want to choose it for your next adventure going mobile. And if you don't want to do it all yourself, your application has other types of business and you just want to add video to it, use the GTMeet SDK. Um, I'm happy to help you out if you have any problems with it. <coughs> and if you have questions, I run out of time, so meet me in the hallway. Thank you. <laughs>